is Science Friday. I'm Ira Plato. Raise your hand if you pay close attention to your teeth. Hmm? Now raise your hand if you're a parent of a teething infant. The difference becomes painfully obvious, doesn't it? For you parents, do you impatiently wait for baby's teeth to poke through or soothe your fussy teething toddler in the middle of the night? You might find yourself wondering why humans go through all this trouble for a set of teeth that are only temporary. Then of course, one question can lead to another. Are baby and adult teeth made of the same stuff? Why can't we just grow a new tooth if we lose one? And how did ancient people take care of their teeth? Did they have a dentist? Was there such a person? We have questions and so do our kids and we want to hear from them too. So let us know what you're curious about when it comes to your teeth. Here to tackle those tooth questions is a tooth scientist. She studies ancient human teeth to understand how humans evolved. Dr. Shara Bailey is a biological anthropologist, associate professor at New York University. Dr. Bailey, welcome back to Science Friday. Thanks for having me. I love being here. Oh, it's so nice to have you. Uh, just a note to our listeners, we are recording this in front of a live Zoom audience. And if you want to be part of our next Zoom recording, yeah, join us. You can sign up at our website at sciencefriday.com slash events. All right, uh, Dr. Bailey, let's clear up this first mouth mystery. What's the difference between our teeth and our bones? Are they made of the same stuff? Oh, um, well, the, the white part of your teeth that we see when we smile is made of uh, enamel. And enamel is really, really hard. And it's made about 97% of it is made of minerals. Um, and underneath the tooth enamel, you have something called dentine, which is very much like bone. So it's about 80% or 70% uh, mineral in content. So it's very similar in, in makeup as bone. But the, the white part you see, that's different. So just as your bone is really living in your body, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> just as the inside of your bone is, is alive and living in your body, the inside of your teeth is alive and living. Yes, yes. Inside, uh, inside we t our teeth, we have nerves and blood vessels that are very, very much alive as, as anyone who's had a cavity filled or a root canal could certainly attest to. Ah, just thinking about it, though, I'm not trying not to go there. Um, let's talk about baby teeth now. Why have we evolved as humans to need baby teeth? Why can adult teeth just grow bigger with us? Oh, that's a good question. Well, we're we're really constrained by our evolutionary history. So all mammals, in fact, have baby teeth. And since humans are mammals, we kind of just have that evolutionary baggage that we bring along with us. Um, so, you know, um, the reason why we can't have just one set of teeth, our adult teeth, is because, of course, when we're babies, we're teeny, right? So we can't have these yeah. big teeth in a teeny tiny mouth. And um, and so you're born um, and you develop these baby teeth. But as you grow, of course, your jaw gets bigger and you need bigger teeth. And of course, on the opposite end of the spectrum, why can't we keep regrowing our teeth if, as we lose them the way sharks do? Yeah, that, that would be nice. But if you think about it, right, what do we use our teeth for compared to what do sharks use their teeth for, right? We use our teeth to slice, but also to grind. And if you're going to be grinding things up, you need a bigger surface area, you need a thick enamel so they don't wear down. And, and because of that, your body invests a lot of energy into making your teeth. And um, and the shark's tooth, the body doesn't inv invest a lot of energy in, in making them. And so um, it's just, um, again, you, you know, you, you invest a lot of energy into making these teeth, you're going to make them last as long as possible. Is there another animal that 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 has teeth like ours that can remake them over and over again? Um, not like ours, you know, but, um, you know, uh, like sharks, uh, crocodiles, alligators can regrow their teeth, not as many times, maybe about 80 times over their lifespan, but all their teeth are just simple cones. They don't have the cool mammal teeth that we have. So, um, well, let's see, I'm going to revise that. Elephants regrow their teeth about six times and manatees can re regrow their teeth more times than humans. But wow. other than that, wow. other than that, most mammals are just like humans, uh, or humans, I should say, are like most mammals. <laughs> yeah. Could, could we humans modify our genes so we could grow a new set of teeth if we lose one? 
they are working on that. Yes, that's something that people are, scientists are actually working on and trying to harness the, the genes that um, allow alligators uh, to regrow their teeth. And they're experimenting and seeing if they can um, use it for regrowing teeth. If you get your tooth knocked out, is there something they can do to alter the gene that would allow you to regrow? Because we retain the, the dental lamina um, so we have the potential. All you need to do is insert a tooth bud and then just get the chemical process going, the, this kind of interaction between uh, molecules. That's all you got to do. That's it. <laughs> That's easy it. peasy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have, a, we have someone from uh, Louisville who wants to... Uh, 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 let's go right to Liam from Louisville, Kentucky. He has a question about loose teeth. Hi, Liam. Hi, how are you? Hi, fine. Thank you. Go ahead. My question is, why do teeth move around so much before they fall out? Ooh, um, well, when your um, adult teeth are growing, they, um, they produce this kind of chemical signal that tells your baby teeth roots to, to basically go away. So your body actually resorbs or, or you know, just kind of breaks down the tooth root. And, and if you uh, break down the tooth root enough, eventually you have no root left and then your tooth gets all wiggly because uh, it's just being held in there by um, what's called something, it's called the periodontal ligament, big fancy word for you. But that's all that's holding your tooth in once the tooth root is gone. And that's why it's so wiggly. Liam, were you like me? Do, do you like to play with your loose tooth if it's <laughs> falling out and try to wiggle it a little bit more and then you know, sort of help it a little? Uh, yeah, I mess, I mess around and I lose teeth. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that question. That was great. Um, you study human evolution by examining ancient teeth. What, what tales can the teeth tell? Oh, they can tell us so many things. They can tell us um, about diet in the past, uh, what kind of uh, diets uh, humans were actually eating. Um, we can look at um, microscopic toothware to tell us something about diet. Um, we can look at um, pathology, like uh, cavities, the rate of cavities over time. And you know, something a lot of people don't know is that before people started farming about 10,000 years ago, people didn't have to worry about cavities. You didn't have to go to the dentist um, because their diets were, they're mostly protein or, or whole grains and they just didn't have the, you know, really sugary kind of diets that we have today. Can you tell about, speaking of diets, can you tell about how healthy they were from looking at their teeth? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, besides looking at cavities, you can look at gum disease because gum disease affects the, um, the bone that holds in your tooth. Um, and so, yeah, you can tell quite a bit about health um, from the teeth. Well, thousands of years ago, people did not live as, as we are now, right? I mean, life expectancy would be in, in your 30s or 40s. Would, yeah. would, mm -hmm. would you expect then that, that people kept their whole set of teeth up until their death, just uh, in general? Um, they, 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 a lot of them do, but a lot of them don't, um, but they lose them not because of cavities, they lose them because of tooth wear. So uh, I've seen some, uh, gosh, I would wish I could share some pictures with you. Um, I have one image I love to show my students of a, an individual that wore their teeth all the way down. So everything was gone, like it was just the roots. So basically they were chewing food on the roots of their teeth. It was, it was amazing. And, and that's remarkable because uh, in, the, in most cases, once you start wearing your teeth down to that, um, to that amount, um, you develop abscesses, which, which basically will, can kill you. <laughs> well, um, do you have any idea what they, were, what they were chewing on to wear it down that much? Oh gosh, I, I don't know. What, um, what kinds of stuff would it be? I mean- well, Rain. you could be, no, 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 it would be these, this was, um, this was uh, something that was about 40,000 years old. So they were eating meat, um, but it's possible that you can, uh, you know, if you dry meat, that can become tougher or you can get grains, um, you know, dirt and things um, and that will cause, that's more abrasive and that can mm. wear your teeth down quickly or, or it was just a very old individual. Speaking of old, uh, what are some of the oldest teeth that have ever been found? Uh, human teeth? Yeah. 
Yes, um, I've I've looked at those. They're um, about well, okay, not all of them. The oldest human teeth would be about six or seven million years old. I have not seen those personally, um, but I have seen uh, the ones from the species Artipithecus, which are four point four million years old, and that was cool <laughs> to yeah, say. I'll, I'll, I'll bet. I mean, do you also find old baby teeth? We do, sure. Yeah, not they, they, you don't find them as often, and you can imagine that um, when the, of course, when your baby teeth fall out, the root is gone, right? So mm -hmm. all you're left with are these little teeny tiny tooth crowns, and they're, you know, they're hard to recover from an archaeological site. They may be there, but people might not recognize them, and also they tend to get worn down too. Um, so when we do recover baby teeth, a lot of times they're very, very worn. I'll bet. And, and the it, oldest baby teeth that you have found? Um. Oh, that that would be in the the millions. It would be three point four. I think the oldest ones I've seen. I can't remember if the Artipithecus has any baby teeth. Hmm. All right. Let's go to Dax from Phoenix. Uh, has a question about dinosaur teeth. Yeah, I I want to know that. Dax, go ahead. <laughs> what? Um. What? Dax, do you have a question ask for Ask my question. Or? I'm going to have yeah. to look at it again. I can't remember it. <laughs> Take your time. <clears throat> Take your time. Uh-huh. What, what did dinosaurs do to take care of their teeth? Ooh. Ooh. Um, dinosaurs probably had teeth that would be, that would, um, like alligators, they would replace their teeth if their teeth fell out. So they probably didn't really have to take care of them. They were lucky. They just ate what they wanted to eat. When their tooth fell out, grew back in, no problem. I imagine you find baby dinosaur teeth also somewhere along the line. Somebody would. I haven't. Somebody would. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's talk about the baby teeth a little bit more. Uh, when you study them, do they have the same forensic markers that adult teeth have? Um, yeah, they do. They, they, the, the front teeth, the incisor teeth are not quite as, um, com they're much simpler. Uh, they're, they're smaller, of course, but they're also simpler. But the, but the molars, the baby molars do have the same kinds of um, geographic, you know, the characters that we, that we recognize as being markers of certain geographic areas. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, when you come across some really old teeth, how do you tell whether it's from an ancient human or some pre-human? Is there is it easy or very difficult to tell? Uh, well, there are some very um, diagnostic characteristics. So for example, uh, if I saw a baby tooth from a Neanderthal, I would be able to tell you it's from a Neanderthal because they're very distinctive. Uh, the, I mean, to you, probably if I showed them to you, you'd say they look like just like ours, but to a trained eye, you can see uh, big differences. Um, and the same for, yeah, for earlier ones like Australopithecines, they have definitely uh, some certain characteristics that would tell me that that's, that's an ancient human. Absolutely. This is Science Friday from WNYC Studios, talking with Dr. Shara Bailey, professor of anthropology at New York University. And we don't have to pull teeth with her. I had to get a dad joke in some place, <laughs> Dr. Bailey. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, I, I looked at a skeletal, skeletal. I looked at a skeletal picture of a baby's head when I was researching this, and you know it was kind of shocking to see that the adult teeth are right behind the baby ones when you you know in a child waiting to descend. A freaky. You know, it, it is very freaky. You know, it's not <laughs> obvious when you look at a kid that there's teeth and two sets of teeth in their mouth, uh -huh. and that they have a second teeth right, the second set right behind that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there was a, there was this chart when I was a kid in my dentist's office. He had a chart. It's it's a very classic Cheryl and Masler chart from the 1950s um, that actually showed that. And I remember being fascinated by maybe that was, you know, I should have paid attention to that. I knew I'd be interested in teeth. But I, I remember staring at that chart and being like, oh, I'm seven. And that means these teeth are forming. And yeah. Do, do other primates, you know, chimpanzees, uh... Other kinds of primates have that same two set of teeth system as we do. Absolutely. Not only that, but, you know, uh, the number of teeth that we have, um, you know, uh, two incisors, one canine, 
two premolars, three molars on each side. That's actually something we share with apes and old world monkeys. So our dental pattern is actually quite conserved. Um, and, our, and then we have certain characters on our lower molars that um, are also seen in, in other apes. So we're, we, we have a lot of, um, share a lot of things with, with and, chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I know a number of children who when they lost their baby teeth uh, did not have the same number of teeth coming back. They were sort of missing some of their adult teeth and the orthodontist had to move the teeth around a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are certain hot spot areas in our dentition where, um, if if you're going to have teeth that don't form, that 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 so right next to your main teeth here, these these incisors, these incisors, your wisdom teeth, and um, your second set of your second bicuspids are the ones that if they're not going to form, that, that's where it's going to happen. Hmm. Here's a question from JV in Rockville, Maryland. Are teeth specific to individuals? Do you ever find identical teeth. I guess he's asking or she's asking like fingers, right? Uh, mm. Fingerprints. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, now, of course, if you have identical twins, their teeth are going to look a lot alike. But even in identical twins, um, the teeth might be a little bit different. And that's because it's not just our genes that determine what our teeth look like, but also our environment and the kinds of things that are going on around us or in our um, environment while our teeth are developing. So they could for example, one twin might have smaller teeth than the other twin. But besides twins, um, teeth are pretty unique to each person. Do you have any idea why uh, some of our molars are called wisdom teeth? Yes. I mean, yeah. Why is that? Um, because be <laughs> because when they erupt, we're supposed to be wise by then. <laughs> and oh, here I, I got. Erupt. Yeah, yeah. So I got another thing though. So your your sixth, the first permanent tooth that comes in is um, is called your school tooth because when that comes in, you're of age to go to school. And do you want to guess what the second molar is called? So you have your school tooth, your wisdom tooth. What do you think's in between? Um, uh, I uh, your college tooth, <laughs> your adult <laughs> tooth, no, uh, your, it, your 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 adolescent tooth. I don't know. It's called I, your I give up. the factory tooth, because when the that comes in, you're tooth. old enough to work in a factory. Oh, goodness. That's that's just so we're going back to the 1800s when these teeth were named. Your we're wisdom tooth. Silicon Valley tooth now or something, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> a little coder tooth. Uh, <laughs> and do they have a certain purpose or are they just just filling up the rest of your mouth as they should be? Because so many people have their wisdom teeth pulled out. I mean, yeah, we don't really I mean, need the wisdom teeth so much. We don't. Not so much. I mean, people, the thing is, is that, you know, think about our diets, right? They're so soft now. And in fact, that's one of the problems. Um, that's why people have dental problems is because our jaws don't develop um, like they should because we eat these really soft diets as we're growing up. And so our jaws are small, which doesn't give us enough space to erupt our teeth, which is why sometimes our teeth are impacted, which is can be very dangerous. But um, but there's really no, there's really, if you don't have your wisdom teeth, you, you survived adulthood, you have babies, there's nothing, you know, nature is not selecting against you. <laughs> uh, one last question about the ancient teeth, because it fascinates me. If ancient people uh, had good diets, do their teeth look in better shape than the kind of crummy diets we have now? Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> no kidding. But besides being, you know, they wear wore down faster because their teeth were their diets were tougher. But um, yeah, I don't I don't see cavities. Um, you don't really see periodontal disease that much. Um, no, their their teeth are in good shape. So we don't know if they had dentists that they went to either. Because they wouldn't have needed them. <laughs> wow. They wouldn't have made a living. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good place to wrap up. Thank you very much for taking time to be with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Dr. Shara Bailey, Associate Professor in the Department of Anthropology at New York University. And thank everybody out there in Zoom world uh, for taking time to be with us today. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll revisit one of our favorite charismatic creatures, the thylacine. Is it still extinct? Just what is it? We'll find out after this break. This is Science Friday from WNYC Studios. 